Some may argue that the golden years of hip hop was the 90s era when gangsta rap and hip hop culture really took the mainstream by storm. It was. The genre of hip hop evolved into a mega force all on its own, expanding from just rappers rhythmic speaking over hot beats to creating an entire culture consisting of music, style, clothing, and more. While brands like G-Unit and Rockaware held the 2000s down, one brand pioneered above the rest, establishing FUBU as the go-to brand for all things urban and streetwear. FUBU was hotter than hot at one point, but although hip hop has become more popular than ever throughout the years, FUBU unfortunately has not, and perhaps it had something to do with its pitch. For us, by us, being nothing short of an illusion? No worries, we gonna get to it. But first, we need to discuss FUBU and how big of a chokehold it had some of you, or your mamas and daddies in. The shoes, the jeans, the big jerseys? I know y'all remember them jerseys. Who didn't want the FUBU jersey? FUBU was so huge back in the day, celebs and non-celebs alike couldn't wait to get their hands on whatever it was FUBU was selling. The same way folks out here are getting shanked over a pair of Jordans. That's how the millennial gang felt about their FUBU. Okay, maybe not to that degree. Music groups TLC and Jodeci were just getting their footing. Boys to men were those dudes. And hip hop was the most highly prolific, popular yet controversial genre in music. Along with hip hop's forever rotating subgenres, fashion became a huge staple within the culture. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see one founder, however, that isn't all the way accurate. The hip hop brand FUBU was actually founded by four people, four friends from Hollis, Queens. Carlton E. Brown, J. Alexander Martin, Keith C., and its most notable founder, Damon John, who you may also recognize from the hit investment show Shark Tank. Inspired by Nike, FUBU was nothing but a mere thought that had been miraculously birthed thanks to Damon John's mama, who took out a mortgage on their home for $100,000, only because no other bank would give the young aspiring entrepreneur a loan. Say less, Mama John had her babies back. A young Damon actually got quite the practice helping his mother sell clothes right from their living room. So needless to say, the young boy was experienced. He ended up using the 100K to transform half of his home into a factory. A young Carlton Brown used to go with his mother to a hat store in which she owned, aiding her in her business. Needless to say, he hated it. So much so, he thought he was being punished every time she dragged him along with her. Along the way, he crossed paths with a young Damon John when the both of them were just toddlers, and the two boys eventually grew closer and closer. Damon just so happened to be Carlton's next door neighbor, and the two began running around Queens, New York on a mission to get to the bag. Co-founder J. Alexander Martin, on the other hand, disclosed recently that FUBU, as of today, is generally a licensing company. As for Keith Perrin, he became the founder of FUBU Radio, which we'll get into in just a bit. But first, back to how FUBU came about. Damon John and his clique made an appearance at a trade show in Las Vegas, where they managed to sell $400,000 worth of clothes that ironically ceased to exist, leading to John's mother taking out yet another mortgage on her home due to her son being turned down by around 30 banks for a business loan. The sacrifice went in Damon's favor, and thanks to Mama John yet again, Damon and his business partner scored big after Damon's mom suggested that they advertise their brand in newspapers. And surprisingly enough, popular South Korean company Samsung engaged. After Samsung invested in the brand in 1995, FUBU began to catapult in popularity, pulling out the big guns and pulling in the big dogs. Dr. Dre, Ludacris, LL Cool J, and even the king of pop himself, Michael Jackson, were rocking their FUBU. The people wanted to know how they, too, can get their hands on this new rising fashion brand. From there, FUBU began growing in popularity, with notable names such as Dr. Dre and a young Ludacris sporting their stuff. Word of mouth was the biggest form of advertising back then. And as more people hit the streets in FUBU, others began inquiring what this was and where everybody was getting it from. Although the brand had skyrocketed like never before, it hadn't been until 1998 that the brand really blew all the way up, grossing around $300 million globally. How could they top that, you ask? Well, thanks to Ladies Love Cool James and that dang Gap commercial, FUBU stock was up and stuck. Uh, kind of. When clothing brand Gap asked the biggest name in hip hop at the time, LL Cool J, to appear in one of their many adverts, LL said, bet. 
However, they were not prepared for him to come up to the video shoot sporting a FUBU hat and low key throwing shade to Gap all the way through. Attempting to clutch onto the urban side of things, Gap and companies like it wanted to dip their capitalist toes into the hip hop scene, noticing the genre was gaining more steam and fast. LL even took it a step further, making sure to incorporate FUBU's famous pitch, For Us By Us. After the applause and giggles following LL Cool James' performance, those over at the Gap were flabbergasted once they realized not only did LL throw shade, but he helped popularize the FUBU brand even more. Influenced by their fave, those who viewed the commercial wanted to know where they could get their hands on this so-called FUBU and were left disappointed upon figuring out that the Gap did not sell the brand at their stores. Best believe Gap was pissed. They even tried to pull the advert commercial for a short while. Too late because they, the public, already saw it and wanted whatever LL was selling and ironically enough, it wasn't the gap they were interested in. FUBU was hot all the way into the 2000s and although its creators were no media moguls like Jay-Z or the forever controversial Diddy, they were more so a conglomerate of the forever controversial Russell Simmons in the sense that they've involved their brand in hip hop's culture. The same way Russell made Def Comedy Jam and hip hop mix, FUBU Fubu mesh style and the genre well, expanding into other avenues like a joint collaboration with Universal Records to release a compilation album titled The Good Life. You had to be there. The Good Life spawned the hit Fatty Girl, featuring Ludacris, LL Cool James, and Keith Murray. Shockingly enough, it went on to chart on Billboard and created another single, Lights, Camera, Action. More big names also appeared on the album, including Nas, Nate Dogg, Beanie Man, and more. Business is never linear, and with time ticking as rap began to morph into something no one would have imagined it to be, FUBU's demands were starting to become less and less, less exclusive and way too accessible, and y'all know how that goes. Eventually, FUBU clothing and items ended up on clearance racks and in discount stores due to oversaturation. A few years later, it had withdrawn from the U.S. market, expanding into the Asian and European markets as the non-U.S. hip-hop fans were fiending for hip-hop more than ever. Damon John, FUBU's OG founder, has gone on to do big things. Aside from being a top investor and Dean the People's Shark, John has found himself in even more controversy. Despite cultivating one of the blackest brands to have ever existed, he doesn't seem to be as pro-black and for the culture as he preaches. Are we surprised? When Damon took to the retire home of social media Facebook, sharing a photo of he and his wife, his followers were shocked to discover that his wife was, get this, a whole white woman. Yes. <sighs> Pretends to be shocked. <sighs> what happened to the whole for the culture, Damon? Followers were quick to point out the hypocrisy, given that FUBU's proposition is all about being down with the brown, and that he made all that wealth off of the supposed culture just to give it right back to the white community via his white wife. Years after FUBU's demise, circa 2009, the brand had a relaunch, collaborating with other retailers, including Puma, Forever 21, Urban Outfitters, Century 21, and more. Late 2020 saw the return of FUBU and thanks to the reimagining of Y2K fashion, it sparked a new interest among the younger gents. Celebs like SZA and even Drake have been seen sporting FUBU's famous jerseys in recent years. And honestly, we wouldn't be surprised if FUBU had a sudden resurgence amongst the mainstream hemisphere. Did you own some FUBU attire? What do you think about people calling out Damon John for his relationship choice? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.